ação. Love our selfishness. The memory for... If, 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 if you look at the picture again, <laughs> the person is pointing to me. The second half of the picture. In the first half, one has his hand on the other. One and the, and the other half of the picture, the person is pointing to towards themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think when you look at the lesson, the love takes the hand of the other and hold that hand, whereas selfishness say I am the most important. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and, and it makes me think of our church. <clears throat> you know, it's easy to to think about our church and what our church is going through, where ideally, <clears throat> ideally we should be mindful of the needs of those around our church to be able to reach out and love those around us and the needs and those that come to our church to reach out to those needs. But I think also, <clears throat> um, the church and the whole should not expect that the church will reach out to me when I'm not reaching out to anybody. If, if all of us reach out to one another, then there'll, be, then there'll be a different kind of church. Instead of, well, you have to take care of me. If you don't take care of me, I'm going to go away. Right, right, Somebody right. will take care of me. Right, right. Yeah. So that's where, that's where the, 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 the lesson this week, the central issue, love or selfishness. Yeah. Is it me or is it all of us together? Very important. Well, and it, it was interesting to, to read in uh, mm -hmm. the great conversation, you know, it said to read chapters one and two and about the early Christians mm -hmm. and how they loved each other, mm -hmm. yeah. how they shared everything. Mm -hmm. They sold their properties and, you know, used the money for whatever the needs were. And then I could see the, 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 the whole idea of selfishness, love of selfishness with Ananias and Sapphira. Oh, yeah. And you think of, I, I read also about even when there was pandemics, you know, in the, in the land, the Christians oh, yeah. would they were the be the nurses and go mm -hmm. out, even though they may lose their lives in the process, mm -hmm. they gave loving care to those who were struggling. Kind of makes you think of our health system that we have now. You know, a lot of Adventists, when they go to school, they become doctors and nurses and, and teachers with the idea of giving back and help, helping and healing and teaching and things. That characteristic is, is still evident rather than going to school to just make money for mm -hmm. myself. Yeah. Right? <clears throat> so the memory verse says... We, meant, we, we read, read that already. We read that. Yeah, keep going to Sunday. Oh, okay. The broken hearted Savior. The broken hearted Savior. Well, there's a last paragraph I had on Sabbath that yeah. I underlined. It says, We will study Satan's twofold strategy, both to deceive and destroy God's people. Mm -hmm. What the evil one fails to accomplish through persecution, he hopes to achieve mm -hmm. through compromise. God is never caught by surprise, and even the most challenging times, he perseveres, Preserve. or, or excuse me, preserves his people. So, you know, this lesson brought brought, brought out how much persecution. Remember, the, the people, even the disciples, were hung upside down, and just different things happened. And finally, it seemed like with all the blood that was shed, the seed of Christianity spread even more and more. So, Plan B of the devil was compromise, which, but it, yeah. which we still feel today, yeah. compromise. And what does it mean when it says, in the most challenging times, well, no, no, it says, but, it was a but, I said, he always, God is never caught by surprise, and that even in the most challenging times, He preserves His people. Preserves His people. So He's there. Yeah. He's there for us, even when we get caught in things that we shouldn't. Right. 
Exactly. And pres preserves his people kind of reminds me of the word sanctifies, he, which is a daily walk, right? There's a sanctification process, and Jesus does that within us. He sanctifies or preserves us. I, I was thinking of that word preserve. You know, you, you think of it as saves, but when I think of my wife as she's cooking and canning something, the preservation process is something that gets rid of impurities and keeps it so that it's safe to store for a while. Yeah. When okay. you think about strawberry preserves, yeah. Right? Yeah. you know, they're sitting on the shelf, they're not in the refrigerator, but yet they're still safe, ready to be opened and mm -hmm. spread joy on the bread. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It is, it is good to know the Lord because sometimes there are circumstances in life, socially and otherwise, sometimes people will see as if they are going to come to them. You can't leave your nice job and God say, God has to the church. <laughs> Or something like that. You're not eating or you're not doing this. And he used to raise pig, but now he <laughs> so so we have to know that God is is ready to help us once we are willing to obey and to bring our lives under subjection. <laughs> But you, but you know, I into that now, but I think God is willing to help us, even if, even when we we are not, we're not willing to do His will. He's still there working with us. Mm -hmm. He never gives up on us. No, even even those who nailed Him to the cross, mm -hmm. His heart went out to them. Mm -hmm. Father, forgive them. Yes. Yeah. Well, Steve, Stephen, when he was stoned, hold not this against them. Mm -hmm. you know, was was their prayer? Yeah. But let me ask the question: What does it mean to say? He does not ever give up on anybody. What, what that? I think this world is still in existence. And I believe this world is still in existence because God wants God wants everybody in this on this earth to be saved. Mm -hmm. Unless they don't want to. Yes. But he still wants it. Huh? I think he still wants it, but he's going to recognize their right. Yeah. Yeah. But the title of Sundays is the broken hearted oh. Savior. When you, when you plead for someone, your tears may come down and know that I want you to have a relationship with me. I am the source of life. And how broken hearted. It shows just the tenderness of a loving Lord who you know, like it says in here that, but you are not willing to come to me, you know, and, and, it, and it broke his heart. You know, looking over the mountain into Jerusalem, and there's not going to be one stone left on another. And he would have, he would have hovered them as a chicken, the ch little yeah. chicks, and yet they wouldn't come to him, and it broke his heart. Yeah. He said, how often would I... Uh, uh, try to gather you as a hen, yes. God as a chick on over, but you will not let me. <clears throat> so it seems to me that he goes to the uttermost mm -hmm. in an effort to <clears throat> save all of us. And I, I think as he's, he's there looking over the city weeping, he's looking down through the future and he sees, you know, 30, 40 years down the road when the Roman army mm -hmm. is laying mm -hmm. siege to Jerusalem. And I think he's looking a few centuries down the road to what we go through. Mm -hmm. they, they, they also, as human beings, Christians, we can look ahead. Let's say you have your children. You try to send them to college or wherever, and you have to give them a position. You are looking for a future for them. But they drift away and they drift away. And when you realize you pass by, you see this one in a liquor shop or something like that, you know, it breaks your heart. Mm -hmm. And the, 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 the distant focus, you're looking at this person drinking liquor, stumbling on their mm -hmm. board. He doesn't see it that way. 
he thinks he's happy and he's enjoying himself. But unless he's changed, one day you'll pass and you see somebody laying down on the street side. And when you go nearby, you say, oh, that's my son. Well, not just liquor. I used to think of it now. It's the pleasures, drunken with the pleasures of life, right? We can be drunken with TV. We can be drunken with going out and eating, you know, gluttony. We can be drunken with so many things that can pull us now. Facebook, you know, just a... <laughs> yeah, like I think I said last week, you know, you scroll and five minutes later you realize oh, it's, wow. it's an hour yeah, later. And, and, and it takes you into a trance almost. And, you, you know, yeah. we're... The second, uh, not the second, the, the, the first sentence in front of the Sunday says, the second phrase of it says, he came to his own, and his own, and his own did not receive him. Yeah. And then it says, Jesus did everything he could to save his people from, him, from the coming destruction of the beloved city. Yeah. But the Jesus' love for his people flowed from a heart of infinite love to repeatedly appeal to them in love to repent and to accept his gracious invitation of mercy. Mm -hmm. We're saying since he came to his own, why were they called his own? Was it because they claimed to be oh, Christians, wow. as it were? Isn't that true? And yet they did not recognize, you know, I mean, I think Jesus would claim everyone as mm -hmm. his own that would choose him. But yet, are we blind to what Jesus is doing for us? Forget we, am I blind to what Jesus is doing for me? The scripture says, for God so love the world. Yes. But you know, sometimes you have in a family, a brother or sister, who only thinks about themselves. Mm -hmm. And the rest of the family is there trying to help them, or trying to work together. And this one member of the family he or she decide, listen, I don't care what you do. Mm -hmm. I, this is what I want, and this is what I'm going to look see for. And I think that's the position that Jesus was in when he came mm -hmm. to the city. And, and, and so many reject, especially, especially the, the leaders, mm -hmm. the scribes and the Pharisees and the, the, um, mm -hmm. the, the, the high priest and all the cohorts with the high priest. They only the want to, they didn't want to know anything about him, whatever. Mm -hmm. And, and they were the ones, the most learned, they had the most opportunity to mm -hmm. see what was in the scriptures, foretelling what was happening. Mm -hmm. And were they ignorant or were they willfully ignorant? Willfully. Why do you say willfully? They know, even sometimes you raise your children in the church and give them the good background and everything, but they go there and they start picking liquor and galvanizing and the rest of it. And every now and then it's just there, but they find it terribly like. <laughs> well, but you know, I wonder, is it is it a situation where they say, you know, I see what you're saying, but I'm gonna do it this way. Or yeah. is it a situation where they got distracted, quit paying attention to where they should go, and what's right is way back in the background, but it's just not where they are right now. I mean, I don't know if they have consciously said, I'm not going there, or if they have simply drifted away. Mm -hmm. could and be in one that. case, if the choice is made, those yeah. are the ones where you have to let them make the choice. But if it's a case of where they've drifted, there's still hope. It's still there. You just need to light the fire again. But but a lot of a lot of um, people, young people particularly, who sometimes don't the want to yes, I say that. <laughs> just just feel that where well, they're missing something and they yeah, but maybe that's when when I get older I'll go to church or I can't take all of my um, work so hard and take my money, give it to church, and pastor, we're driving a car, and I wouldn't have a bicycle. <laughs> we were in a meeting one time at work, an uh, administrative level meeting, and one of the members, it was the meeting before that we got into the agenda, was having struggles with her kid. Mm -hmm. And, you know, somebody mentioned the verse, you know, raise up a child in the way she should go. 
That verse doesn't say anything about when the kids are young. So when he's old, when he's, when he's old, older, <laughs> the problem is, as I look at it, is sometimes they don't make it though old oh, because yeah. the choices they've made in in the young life yeah. and they end young, and so it's like you know you can't just hope they're going to come back later. You still need to keep working at them and keeping things in front of them as best you can. But, and sometimes you know the best thing for we of keeping. Uh, helping them is no matter by saying nothing because very often if you say something, yeah, it, it, it brings up so much animosity. And, yeah, yeah. You know, sometimes you just gotta, you but, just gotta do what yeah. you have to do. Let's back off. Yeah. Yeah. You were, Dana was saying that the other day. What's that? Sometimes you just have to back off. Mm -hmm. yeah. You try to discuss. Religious things, you know, Bible things and stuff. With because our it, kids, or with, because it creates animals. Yeah. It creates you know, animals. It, it, yeah. The old saying comes back, like my mom did. A person convinced his, uh, against his will yeah. is of the same opinion still. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's right. You can't. You can throw every argument there is in the book, and they will not listen to you. Yeah. Yeah. I have a younger brother who went to a academy. Oh, academy. Okay. I mean, we we of them that we were not a seven Adventist family. My sister was the first came into the into the, the church, and she was teaching at the school that he went to, seven Adventist school. And all he could come and tell this one did this, that one did that, the other one did this, and you, all you could do is find all the all the parts of the school of, of, of the school. He never came into the church. I I was supposed to be the one out there who was supposed to be. Went after the girls and all of that. And the first day I heard this message preached, the first day I heard it, I said, Wow, I must hear more of this. But my brother who went to Adventist school come again, the principal did this, and this teacher did this, and that teacher said this. Mm -hmm. He's never accepted the message. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's some people that can find any any kind of excuse they can do. My my brother. That uh, he's no longer, a, you know, he doesn't go to church or anything. But his thing, they'll let you wear cords, but they won't let you wear Levi's. <laughs> and that was one of his excuses. You know, they're just being two faced. That's just one of the things. Yeah. You know, yeah. but he. As but we can't look to people. I saw somebody's, it's, it's, you know, little parable they made up online, and it was talking about this parishioner come in to see the pastor. I'm leaving the church. It's nothing but hypocrites around here. Everybody does this, this, does this. And the pastor said, okay, well, before you do it, do me a favor. Gave her a tablespoon full of water and said, carry this all the way around. Walk around the church carrying this mm -hmm. and don't spill it. Mm -hmm. And then bring it back. And so, okay, whatever, did this. And then he asked me, says, okay, while you were walking, how many people did you see that were doing all these terrible things. Well, none. Well, <laughs> we're looking for it, you know? <laughs> if, if, if instead, if we focus yeah. right, right. on the Word, if we focus on God mm -hmm. and how we can draw closer and yeah. how we can help others, you know, you know, my prayer is that, you know, that somebody will see something in me that they want to they will draw them closer to God because otherwise, uh, I'm not have a chance to help. If I, if I can help somebody at that class, I'm going back to what I was saying about my brother. Yes. That school gave them a warm lunch. Yeah. They didn't have to go to the shop to buy things. Mm -hmm. They tried every day to give them something yeah. that would, would, would help them. And they couldn't, couldn't see, he couldn't see the goodness of what they were doing. Yeah. And meant very often it was volunteer. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think when you look at a broken heart, it's saving. He came onto his own, and his own received him not. Look how much, look how much Christ did for the help of sleep. Yes. And yet they still turned their backs on him. And when it came for his crucifixion, the very same people whom he helped, mm -hmm. So let's let him let him be crucified. Is it yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's in the last paragraph mm. uh, before it where it says we 
Satan delights in war because it stirs the worst passions of the human heart. Mm. Now through the centuries, it's been his purpose to deceive and to destroy and then blame his evil actions on God. Remember the insurance companies that says acts of God, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'll cover those. God is a bad man. But you know, let's, let's, let's look at that a little bit. <laughs> what about Sodom and Gomorrah? Who did that? Satan or Jesus? Sodom and Gomorrah. No, that's the Well, no, let's, you know, we're saying that Satan blames God, but God does some of this stuff. Well, he? but that, that's when bad things happen to bad people because God was there. But who did it? People. God. God. Who caused the flood? God. God. Caused the flood. Yeah. yeah. And it says, Ellen um, White says that Satan feared for his life. Mm -hmm. You know? And uh, you take... Um, but who caused the sin that caused the flood? Who caused... Yeah. Who caused... So that, that, God, wasn't, you know? that wasn't a natural after effect of I stole a candy bar, you know, type thing. That was truly an insurance thing where it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, and you know, um, what about David killing that servant that killed Saul? Was he punished? David. Well, the guy did come and said, I killed Saul. Yeah, he did. And the Bible said, Mother should live. Mm -hmm. he was brought, brought but God him. didn't blame he him, David for doing that. Hmm? God didn't blame him for doing that. Yeah. Well, he told a lie that he killed, he killed Saul. In yeah. the end of destruction, the end of time. Who, who does that? Mm -hmm. So I think there are times when God does things. Mm -hmm. Puts an end to uh -huh. when it's beyond the point of no return, yeah. fortunately. But if you, if you look right. at the flood, who was destroyed? If you look at Sodom and Gomorrah, who was destroyed? As in the look book again, who was saved? And I think as we look to the end of time, it's the same those thing. Those who are looking to God, those who are in touch with God and are close enough to Him will pass through the fire and burn. They will pass through the floods and escape <laughs> and will rise to live with you with God in heaven. Mm -hmm. I think we should probably keep going. Mm -hmm. okay, but the, the so read Matthew 24, 15 and 20. What instruction did Jesus give to his people to save them from the coming destruction of Jerusalem? The flee to the mountains. Yeah. Don't go down but, the yeah, but he did something amazing. Mm -hmm. Because there was the army that was surrounding the city and about to take it, and then all of a sudden they disappeared. Mm -hmm. They just left. Well, and then, and you know, the Jews pursued. Yeah, but then which the Christians means they let the Christians free to do it. Right. Exactly. But, you know, if you're looking at this, it says, um, you look at verse 15 of Matthew 24. Therefore, when you see the abomination mm -hmm. of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, when you see the sign, the sign, right? That's when it's time to get out. Yeah. And so. You know, what's the Bible say? Surely the Lord does nothing except he reveals it to your servants the prophets. And so it was there, you know, and they did. They were told to flee to the mountains. Mm -hmm. And there was a period of time, and it wasn't like it was just a period of hours or days, but they had to get out right then before the Jews came back mm -hmm. and before the armies came back. And yeah, the you know, the interesting point is this, don't go down to the house to get your jacket. Yeah, yeah. don't. Um, yeah. Yeah. And pray that it's not in the wintertime or in the Yeah. That's, that's interesting. Yeah. Mm. That was after the fact that everybody says all that stuff was done away with. That was, you know, you know, you take yeah. this, it's down seven years after the fact that Jesus yeah. died. Well, yeah, 35 years. Yeah. Exactly. 35 years yeah. later. Yeah. Yeah. 78. Yeah. Yeah. 80. yeah. So it's 35 years that the Sabbath is still in effect. That's right. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. and if you think about it, it's only 35 years. But, um, which means a lot of people were still alive that would have been yeah. alive when uh -huh. were there. And there were a lot of people that had been born since then, and a lot of people would have passed through natural causes, but still. 
people that could have heard Jesus speak and say those words would have been alive to make the choice. Do I leave or do I stay? Uh-huh. Monday. It was probably better than yet. <laughs> that cloth is just merciless. <laughs> this Monday is where it, when it talks about you know them fleeing. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That was it. The Romans fleeing, the Jews pursuing, the Christians in Jerusalem fled to Pella and Puri of John the Jordan River. The promised sign had been given to the waiting Christians, and now an opportunity was offered for all who would to obey the Savior's will. Events were so overruled that neither Jews nor Romans could enter the flight of the Christians. You know, you, I, I, it's almost like I think about, you know, was Jesus passing through unseen or, you know, something of sort pass through unseen. Yeah, he was uh, going to be thrown off that cliff. Yeah. And it wasn't his time, so he just passed right through the crowd. And, you know, everybody was distracted. Uh huh. And, and if you think about it, you know, we talk about our Facebook or the news, it's very easy to get distracted right now. Mm-hmm. There's so, so much going on. Politics. But, but, but that it gives us a. Uh, a re- reflection on what it might be when the judgment sets in. People who had poor desire to, to be on the right side. You know, they had what was quite ready. Yeah, God told them, He says, when you see this happen, yeah. Look do it, get out. <laughs> now, when we see the abomination of desolation, what is the abomination of desolation standing in a holy place? What is that? What do you guys think about that? Destruction was coming to. Yeah, but we have to know what's going to happen so we have a warning. Yeah. What is the abomination of desolation? Because that is a warning. Well, you look at it from two angles. Physically, Rome. Mm-hmm. The Roman army with the eagle and all their force guards and everything, they were the abomination and desolation at a point in time. And so uh, today we have the Roman system of worship, which the doctors say received a deadly wound. And that deadly room was sealed, mm-hmm. and all the world wandered after the, the beast and his image. So it, it, when you look at look back physically at ancient Rome, you got to say ancient Rome, the armies was the the ones who, who had surrounded Jerusalem. They were the ones who were seeking to destroy or to capture God's people, and God would not allow them allow, allow that to happen. So when when they were pushed back. I believe that was the abomination of the desolation they, 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 they wrote because they came back, didn't they? They didn't stay. Push back, they came back later on, didn't they? Mm-hmm. The yeah. Romans I mean, came back to yeah. Jerusalem. Yeah. 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 They, they regrouped and came back yeah. after Israel tried to. When they came back, it was bad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's when not one stone. They stuck shine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. I mean, the historians report that mm-hmm. the Romans really didn't want to tear the whole place down. I think it was just Cephas' writings talk about that, where, you know, there had been an offer like, you know, go and surrender. You know, one last time, there's still one wall standing or something like that. But God, through prophecy, had said none will be standing. Mm-hmm. They would not surrender, and so I can't remember which general it was at the time ordered the troops in. And I, but, I, but he also ordered them not to destroy the temple. Yeah, he ordered them not to, but I think that there was such a frenzy going yeah. on. And uh, once you're in battle and, and your mind's into that thing, you don't give a care. Yeah. And somehow the temple started burning. Mm-hmm. And all that gold seeped into the rocks and all that stuff. So they were after that gold. Yeah. So they upturned all the rocks, from what I understand. Mm-hmm. Just tore it to pieces. 
That must have been a sight, you know, temper. No, no. It must have been a sight with all that gold. Well, yeah. The wars and all of that. <laughs> think about that. You think about Nebuchadnezzar's image. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, where is that? <laughs> Glad I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. But then there's also that um, section at the, end, at the end of that first paragraph on, on the Monday section. Read Psalm 46, 1, Isaiah 41, 10. What do these passages tell us about God's providential care? So God is our refuge and strength. Yes. yes. And in yes. our very presence, I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Yes. Fear not, I will uphold you. Yeah. Yeah. So he, he didn't say that destruction and whatever wouldn't happen. But, but God would be there for you mm -hmm. to protect you who belong to him. And uh, even though we live in a sinful world and it's eminently predestined for a certain level of destruction, it could happen in God's people. Well, and, you know, and some will die. If, if you think about, you know, Matthew 10, do not fear those who kill the body, but do not kill the soul. When God is preserving us, it's our future, our spirit, our soul that he's preserving. The physical body is painful. Yes, there's pain involved maybe physically, but that's not the most important thing. What's important is God and his character being vindicated in front of the universe. And so uh, sometimes it's like Babylonians. Not all of them were ready <laughs> to leave Babylon. <laughs> the, the, the Christians were given incentive to, to leave. But apparently they, they stood there and said, well, <laughs> we can't do any better than whatever. You know, kind of going along with that, you know, one of the reasons that the Romans were really, you know, fighting around the temple was because all the Jews that stayed in Rome ran to the temple and said, Abba, Father. You know, they're claiming, where are you? Where are you? You know, this is your temple and everything. So these Romans were going after these people, too. And um, that makes sense. it's kind of interesting. Was God... With them or the people that flew, uh, fled. I mean, you know, there's a certain they stayed when when God told them get out. Which means they disobeyed. They, they yeah. disobeyed. <laughs> it's like it's like Lot in Sodom. Yeah. Uh -huh. When God said, "Feed the mountain," Lot said, "Wait, there's a little city here. Let me go." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know that I can go all the way to the mountains. How about if I just, you know. What if I just go to, you know, Eustis instead of... <laughs> <laughs> how about that? How about, you know, if you're going to, if you're going to get rid of Orlando, how, is it okay if I just go as far as Eustis? Yeah. yeah. So it, it's, God was with the people that fled. Yeah. Yes, he was. And there are examples for us in our day. Uh -huh. In the time where we don't go home, we just leave. Yeah. And these, like Tuesday's lesson, faithful amid persecution. These people who were fleeing, they left everything. Yes. Mm -hmm. But they were faithful. Mm -hmm. they, they, they took off and did what God said. And, and that's a good contrast. Because um, sometimes material things has an uh, alluring. alluring. Oh, you see that? Oh, you see that? For us to do. So yeah. how easy is that? For us to leave everything and go. Yes. Get up and go on, huh? I was thinking about that this week and saying to myself, what would I do? I mean of course you have to flee. Flee to where? If you can't buy and sell, you go on foot, kayak, how do you go? Mm -hmm. I think that God, if you're fleeing, 
God is with the people that fled, and he will guide us in the way we need to go. That's, you know, we don't have to worry about bread, water, you know, uh, that kind of thing. Even though it seems like you're thinking, oh, my goodness, I need to eat, you know, and survive. Just in the Lord, but, 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 God and be not. Well, we know that in the next year, mm -hmm. that religion is going to come back into laws, right? I mean, what the big deal is, is to bring religion back into the U.S., you know, and right now you hear, I hear, oh yeah, I was looking at something and, you know, you've got people that are saying, keep religion out, then you've got people say, kill anybody that's not a Christian. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, there are people agitating just the Christian nation yeah. if we get things done. And even atheists, even the culture of Christianity they want to keep. They like the churches. They like the music. They don't believe in Jesus or yeah. Jesus rose from the dead, but I was listening to an atheist that was talking about, and they don't want this Hamas and all, all of this other stuff yeah. coming in. Keep with the culture. Yeah. Okay. Of, of, of Christianity. I don't believe in it, but you know, and I think the same thing could happen on the Seventh day Adventist. Yeah, they go to yeah. church, but not we, religious. We, we're, 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 we have a form of godliness, but yeah. are we really? 29, but, but, but the point is that because you are not part of the masses, masses, uh, you're Catholic. Catholic is a uh, worldwide, you know, and um, you're in this corner, as it were, since the advent. But, you know, if you look at Tuesday's lesson, what was it? Why did the church grow so rapidly? The what? Why did the church grow so rapidly? They were being persecuted. It was not popular to do this. If you were part of that movement, you were being hunted down. Yeah. You were being killed. You were being jailed and tortured. And yet it grew. You know, you read the verses there, Acts 241, 3,000 people added in one day. Mm -hmm. So what was going on in the church that was making it grow? The, the spirit of, the, the, spirit of um, the Holy Spirit. Which is the fruits of the spirit of love, was joy, and peace. People wanted to see that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. People came, it, it came there. And I think that part of it is that the members were so in touch with God mm -hmm. that they had, through prayer, they had received the power of the Holy Spirit, and they were on fire. Loving and people. Loving, loving people. And they were. They were going around loving us. And what was it I was reading? Um, that's one way during some of these dark ages times was that the people would spot the Christians was because they were nice yeah, and they were ministering to And they just stuck out. I mean, like, you know, the lesson talked about the um, the plagues and stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think about, you know, my grandparents survived the Spanish flu epidemic. They were in nursing school at the time. Never even got sick. They were caring for the people that got sick. And then they left straight from nursing school, got married, and went to the mission and kept up the work. But, you know, it's like, you know, what causes the work to spread so fast? Unless it's just, again, if we are that in touch with God that people can see in us, are we giving off something and showing something that, hey, I want to know more about that. Mm -hmm. Those people have something. I want to be like that. How do I do it? And there must have been something like that going on because, you know, people don't flock to the Florida State Penitentiary to be tortured and murdered and killed. You know, they don't say, okay, yeah, sign me up for that. No. It's not the torture that they were signing up for. It was something else that everybody, the word was spread that fast. 3,000 in one day, 4,000 in one day. You know, as, as the word was spreading, and it was, it had to be, you know, they're seeing in people's hearts, seeing in their lives, and they're ministering to people and spreading the word and the good news, which is done hard. When, when, the, when the evil force moves in on the Christian, God's emissaries stand in the 
their printed places and people see miraculous things happening and they never see people come after you to try to kill you and when you come you don't see anything like and you see the person come and pass then they begin to look and say wow these people must be have something about them and, and then after a while, that can be a means of helping to convert. But I, think, but I think also that the people who down to earth, when they saw a need, they took care of that need. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> I think that was one of the main reasons why so many people added to the church, because they not only preach love. They showed love. They showed it, yeah. yeah. And I think, and, and, and I think that I might make a statement at times that Jesus is a healing and a Christian. Mm -hmm. And so I think maybe we look at our church, maybe we need to be a little more practical in our, in our approach to, to, excuse me, to evangelism, in that we, we meet the need, we go there and meet the needs of people. The, that includes mental, emotional, spiritual. Mm -hmm. And physical. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I, I think that there's yeah. a ministry that's uh, sponsored by some of the churches over closer to Orlando. They call it Salt. Um, okay. Yeah. They have trailers that they take into parts of the city, uh -huh. and the back end of the trailer opens up, and you got three sinks, and the side of the trailer opens up, and you've got showers, mm -hmm. and they're there to minister to the homeless. They provide meals. They provide a place for them to clean. There's a, a they can wash their clothes. Doesn't do any good to just give somebody clothes and they, you know, yeah. have no way to take care of them constantly in the midway. But you know, it's another way to reach people where they are, meet basic needs, yeah. and you know, make them feel loved. Mm -hmm. One thing to talk about it. It's a whole other thing to go get your hands dirty and actually do something. Right. right. And some sometimes some of those people lose their sense of value that they are human yeah. beings that yeah. they're nobody care about them yeah. so much yeah. and yeah. if somebody come and pick them up and clean them up and give them food and give them encouragement mm -hmm. that you're not just dog food or waste as yeah. you were taught and when those people get converted they usually stand strong I was going to say, too, that, you know, I don't know if you've ever gone through this situation, but you lose your job. And your mental has gone out the door. You say, man, I'm not good enough to do this. You know, I'm, and you're sitting there and think, oh, man, you know. But nothing's really changed. It's just your mind is and the same thing with these homeless people. They get this, this mindset. Well, and, and then, too, you know, you think about it. somebody loses their position, loses their job. You know, everybody else is thinking, oh, I better stay away from that. I don't, yeah. you know, yeah. they're afraid to reach out for fear of the same thing happening to them sometimes. And, you know, are we sometimes afraid to reach out and help the homeless? Well, if I give all my stuff away, then am I homeless next? Mm. I don't know, you know, like I say. Yeah. And, or, or are you going to be attacked? Are you going to have uh, your own safety? Stuff? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, right on the bottom of uh, Tuesday's lesson, it says, despite the devil's most vicious attacks, mm -hmm. the Christian church grew rapidly. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that their blood was like seed or fertilizer. Yes. And they, you know, people, I think, can see somebody that's very kind. And when they're knocked around, people go, what in the world? Well, well and, and if you see somebody being knocked around and they respond to it, you know, with grace because they're connected to God, it's like, okay, wait a minute, again, there's something there that I'm missing. Let me find out what it is. And I'm wondering if that's part of what caused the growth is because the Christian's reaction to the persecution. There's such a, a contrast yeah. between what some people do and what others do. Yeah. You know, persecution can be very vicious and, yeah. and, and it just shakes you. Yeah. But when you see somebody that 
you know, who's helping somebody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or living the right type of yeah. life, you know. Mm -hmm. you, know you know, we mentioned it already, but, you know, uh, Wednesday's lesson, caring for the community. They sold what they had and shared it. Basically, they acted as though they were merely stewards of what God had given them and it wasn't really theirs. I can't, can you imagine that? I mean, really, they they shared what they had. Yeah, I mean, that's almost the very definition of communism for crying out loud. <laughs> Socialism, yeah. Dude. You know, to each according to their need. From each according to their ability to each according to their need. Somebody says, where's that in the Bible? Well, it's not. That's called Marx. Yeah. But it's also an Acts. But to me, the, the communists would, wouldn't tell you that they, they copied that from the scripture. Yeah. And so they try to make it as if those they, they themselves discovered yeah. this, this form of treatment, but they got it from scripture. But then they perverted it. Yes. They yes. perverted it. <laughs> because the difference is, what's the motivation? Right. Yeah. The right. people that we're reading about here in Acts, they were motivated out of their love for love. God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not out of their love for power, but out of their love for God to help somebody else get that is. same connection. Yes. Yes. They weren't giving up of their stuff mm -hmm. so that they could gain power. They were giving up of their stuff so that somebody else could know what they know mm -hmm. and could have the relationship with God that they have. Mm. Every time I, I hear the name Daniel Ortega, I, I smile because he was communist through and through. Mm. And then people of Nicaragua decided we're going to go for go towards democracy. Mm. And so Daniel Ortega, he fought and fought until he, he became, as he said, elected to become the leader of, 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 of Nicaragua again. But when I read what he's doing now, he has done everything possible for both he and his family to stay in power. Yeah. And so when when COVID was hitting the people of Nicaragua, he didn't want his health minister to say, well, so many people died. He kind of distorted figures to make sure make it look <laughs> they were doing a good job. And so when the election came around, he won, his party won the election again. And one of his family members, I think now is, is, is the president of, of Nicaragua. Well, he still is the president of Nicaragua. So, you know, we got to be careful that we, not, we don't become like somebody like that, you know? Yeah. Well, again, I think it, it, it really does come down to the heart, mm -hmm. you know, because if our treasure is really where our heart is, mm -hmm. and our heart and our mind is fixed on God, mm -hmm. then the other things don't matter. But, you know, with so many of the, I mean, that wasn't just in Nicaragua, that was all over the world where people were trying to downplay the effect of the pandemic in their area. Mm -hmm. That was, that was worldwide because, the, you know, I don't care what their party or what their belief is, nobody likes to lose their job. Mm -hmm. Whether their job be, you know, on the line at Ford Motor Company putting the left rear wheel on mm -hmm. or being the president of the company or the, or the governor of the state, nobody wants to lose their job. And so they present themselves in the best light. Mm -hmm. It's just that the people in that level of power have access to the communication forms to that gives them even more power. Mm -hmm. And when you're in a position of being the guy that puts on the lug nuts, well, you can't spread too much power down from there. But if you're the president of the company, then you can reward people. Mm -hmm. Or if you're the, the you know, Ambassador, if you're whatever your position is and you have power to get things down, then it's a little bit easier to keep staying in power. So you can keep that kind of employee screwing on lug nuts. But anyway. <laughs> but, but, you know, taking that lug nut guy on the left tire. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he's doing his job and he'll turn around and talk to the guy on the right lug nut yeah. tire and say, hey, you're doing a quick job, man. You're fast. Yeah. Slow down. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I think there's two curious. ways to do this. One yeah. is show me how you did it. The other one but, is slow down. You're making me look But when you, have, when you say that to somebody, you have a friend. Yeah, yeah. And you say that enough times, you have a lot of friends. Yeah. And, you know, if, if, you, if you study power in organizations, you know, they talk about it. Obviously, the president of the company has power. But then 
you also have people that have power because they know something mm-hmm. and you know or they have relationships and they know people and i know with the hospitals when i was going around visiting the hospitals with the supply chain i would always tell my supply chain managers find the nurse in the building that everybody looks up to we're not talking the director of nurses we may not even be talking a manager just mm-hmm. somebody that everybody else knows and trusts because when it comes time to make changes in what's being used that's the person that can help you or can torpedo it. Uh-huh. If they think it's a bad idea, find out why. Yeah. You know, learn a lot. Because, you know, you can't. But same thing, you know, if we befriend our coworkers, our neighbors, and let them see something, there has to be something there for them to see first. Yeah. But, you know, that's, that's always my first, you know, can they see something in me that's worth doing? And if not, then help me get something that's worth saying. Yeah, yeah. I think when this section of the lesson, caring for the community is yeah. very important. Yeah. And we have the, the disciples, they all, sh- they demonstrated, the people came together, they gave their houses, their land, or whatever it was, and they distributed to those who had what need. And so, because of that, they were able to choose, that's what caused them to choose the seven beacons. Mm-hmm. Because the disciples said, okay, we, we, we don't have to, Give it food tables. Let us choose our seven men who pull up this pull up the spirit so that they could take on that kind of work. And among the seven who they chose, Stephen was one of them. Mm-hmm. But he was a great preacher too. So yeah, but, and it just it also shows you how to run an organization if you're gonna do it. Moses had the same thing told him by his, his father in law. Yeah. Says, hey, you need to get some people under you so you won't have to do it all. Mm-hmm. So if you have some people, you know, one person can be the arm, one person can be the leg, one yeah. person can be the ears, you know, and everybody does their job, it makes the job easy. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, but as they did, but why did they, you know, the apostles needed to spend time with the word. So they, it was taking too much time dealing with the administrative tasks. You know, and instead, they should be out finding wolves to turn into the sheep, and the sheep can take care of themselves to a degree with help. You have the deacons that they appointed to help take care of all that administrative stuff so that you could then go out and continue to add. The apostles devoted themselves to studying the Word and teaching the Word. And they didn't manage the day-to-day affairs of the church. They had people for and I think, you know, we can reach out to each other and help each other. And the church can grow. In the same respect, you know, I think that being having a position in church, Satan can make you so busy, you can lose yeah. your salvation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think that we have to watch it for each of us that we don't lose sight of God helping yeah. other people. Absolutely. And sometimes... It's not even so much helping us taking a certain level of pride that I have this position and I'm begun better than the average person. Yeah. And that's another and it, it's, it's obvious because it's been recognized by the church that you have this position, right? So <laughs> you're, you're not wrong there, brother. <laughs> it's easy to get that feeling, though, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, it is real easy. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's a group effort, you know. It's it's it takes us all. Looking to see here. There's something I've underlined on Friday. How is it that it is asked? Can one who is just and merciful, who is also infinite in power, tolerate such injustice and oppression? This is a question with which we have nothing to do. No. God has given us sufficient evidence of his love, mm-hmm. and we are not to doubt his goodness because we cannot understand the work of his providence. <laughs> There's things we will not understand this side of heaven. The well, rain falls on the just and the unjust. Bad things happen to good people. Mm-hmm. But God is in charge. There's a, there's a and I don't understand see. everything, nor will I. And I guess mm-hmm. I have to be afraid of it. Sam says, God is so wonderful. Mm-hmm. In my trust. 
Concerned, you know, about she was thinking she was teaching, and I told her we were teaching and stuff. So, but just keep her in your prayers. She's yeah. moved, I guess, from the hospital to uh, it's called Pam. She's, I think she's she across. Pam Rehab. It's it's, it's, it's a new rehab. hospital. It's a new rehab place. She had a bad night last night. Oh, really? Yeah, my wife was over there until about three in the morning. Oh, oh, my. And uh, so keep her in your prayers. What, what has actually happened? If she I had know. pneumonia, right? Yeah, she had pneumonia. Why don't we have prayer and we'll okay. talk and then we'll talk. Okay. Father, okay. <laughs> well, thank you for the blessings you give us. Thank you for bringing us here today with the mm-hmm. word. Be with us now as we go into the church service. We will pray also for our sister Jan. Amen. Be with her. Draw close to her. Let her feel your presence and heal her as you see fit in Christ's name. Amen. 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 